Good evening, everyone. Welcome you back to another uh, session on Wednesday where we're still dealing with the topic of faith. Uh, really, we started our journey about a month ago dealing with fear for several series, several sections. And now we're on our third section dealing with faith. And I think we're going to have a good time on tonight digging into Hebrews chapter number 11, verse 1. Um, indeed, this whole chapter is one of the chapters I call uh, the, the heroes and sheroes of faith, the hall of faith, uh, where it uh, just recalls all the biblical figures and how they had such outstanding and great faith uh, manifested in their lives. And we want to live that way, too. We want to know what the ancients knew and how we can apply what they knew to what we're doing today and see God move in our lives. So we're going to dig a little bit into Hebrews chapter number 11, verse number one. Uh, but before we pray on tonight and get into tonight's session, I have to do a homework check. Now, come on now, be honest. Did everyone do their homework? I'm going to tell the truth and shame the devil. Did you do your homework on this week? Two weeks ago, our assignment was to just on that week to make a, um, make a decision to simply believe God. That was our homework on week one. On week two, we were supposed to start a faith journal. We were supposed to start a faith uh, journal on this uh, particular week. Um, so I'm hoping that, that you made the decision to believe God. And I'm hoping that you also took some time to begin your faith journal. Uh, now, the purpose of the faith journal is something that we can use to chronicle our journey with Christ and leave it as a legacy for our generations. Just the same way that we have the biblical text, which gives uh, the, uh, the overview and some really deep and intimate details about the life of the bib biblical characters. And we're able to glean strength. We're able to glean insight and we're able to glean our revelation from what they've been through. I think it's also important that we uh, now in the contemporary times also do the same, leave a legacy behind so that, you know, your, your, your nieces, your nephews, your children, your grandchildren, your great grandchildren, hopefully your great great grandchildren can look back and see, look how great great grandma or great great grandpa or, 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 or great great uncle or great great auntie or whatever the relation may be, they can look back into their own generation and see how people walked in faith it's a wonderful thing, and I think it's also a powerful thing that we can do to leave that legacy. So on tonight, let us review a few concepts, and we're going to get right into our teaching. Um, we have a working definition of faith, which is our ability to believe that God can do something through us so that God will be glorified. Again, our ability to believe that God can do something through us so that God will be glorified. And then on last week, we had uh, actually, we began with three con three components of faith, rather. We added one on last week and I'm adding another one today. So let's, let's review those components. Uh, the first component is that we have to make a decision to believe God. We have to make a decision uh, to believe God, and that decision will not be easy. That's point number two, component number two, rather. That decision will not be easy because if it was easy, it would not require faith. And number three, faith requires us to keep believing. It requires us to keep believing and pointing back to Father Abraham, noting that 25 year interim period where he had to have consistent faith, still yet believing, not seeing the promise yet, but yet believing that God would do what God had promised to do. And another thing that we saw, uh, looking at some of the biblical characters in uh, Hebrews chapter 11, but also looking at Abraham's life, where we discussed uh, the, um, the, the, this another component here about your faith having the ability to outlive you. And quite certainly, Abraham didn't see everything that God promised. The one thing that he did see, which I believe gave him uh, e even a boost of encouragement or a boost of faith uh, to trust God even more was the birth of his son Isaac. Also, God had promised to, to bring his, uh, his seed and his generation into a particular land that they would have and that they were flourished in. But he also promised Abraham that his uh, descendants would be, he challenged Abraham and said, if you can count uh, the stars in the sky, that's how many your descendants will be. And Abraham did not live to see that actualized, but he did live to see the birth of his son, Isaac. So again, your faith will outlive you. So that, that's why I think that that faith journal is so vitally important. And lastly, on today, I'm adding one more thing, one more to the component list is that faith requires you to agree with God. 
Faith requires you to agree with God. And we'll talk about that a little bit later on today. But let us pray. We're going to jump right into our uh, biblical text. Hopefully you have uh, some digital devices ready because we're going to do some uh, jumping around to different translations. If you have the ability, uh, I think a good resource that you can use uh, on tonight to kind of follow along. I'm also going to try to put it on the screen. At least I'm going to attempt to. Hopefully that works on tonight. Um, but you can go to uh, Bible Gateway or BibleHub.com and they'll have all these different translations that we're going to read from, from on tonight. But what you can do and get ready is get King James Version ready, um, either on your, your apps or, or your um, digital devices or your laptops or wherever you have handy. Uh, if you can go to the website, I think it'll make it much easier to, to go between the different translations. So we're going to start off Hebrews chapter 11, just looking at the first verse on tonight. We're going to dig into it and see what we can discover how God will speak to us. Let us pray. Lord, I do thank you for the opportunity to be before these, your precious people. I ask God once again that you consecrate me afresh, that you anoint me afresh and prepare me for the task at hand. I ask that your word, which is the incorruptible seed, be planted in the hearts and minds of all who would hear, that the seed would take root, that it would grow and produce much fruit. I thank you for these things in Christ's name. Amen and amen. So are you there, uh, a saint to God, family and friends? We're going to start off with Hebrews uh, chapter number 11, verse uh, number one. I, I, sometimes I like to give a tidbit or some insight to, to my process of how I dissect and study the scriptures. Well, one of the first resources that I go to, I guess maybe it's old school, I guess it's just a habit. Uh, there's no real academic or scholarly reason why I do it in this particular way, but I'm just accustomed to reading from the King James Version, something I did from a very, very young age, um, and I still do uh, uh, until now. And so we're going to read that first uh, verse in the King James Version. But also, when I want to get a more clear understanding of how we speak and think today, uh, I like to read some of the other uh, newer translations as well. So we're going to go through some of them on tonight, starting with the King James. Again, Hebrews chapter number 11, verse number one, the hall of faith. Are you ready? Let's go. In the King James Version, the scripture reads, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, the evidence of things not seen. Now I'm going to attempt to allow us to see uh, some of these different translations on tonight. So you will be able to see as well if you're not able to get it up on your tablets and things of that nature. So hopefully you can see this on your side. I can't see it from my side, but I'm hoping that you see it on your side. And you should see here uh, some different uh, translations here uh, of that same verse. So we read from the King James Version and it's giving us some insight about what faith is, about what faith is. Now the writer uh, brings out several components uh, several key words in their definition. Of course, faith uh, being uh, the main subject of this, and I thought it would be prudent to look at these uh, components and or segments and or keywords uh, pulling from uh, the original language that this text was written in. And also, I wanted to make note of some key resources that I use on the regular basis um, I'm not quite sure what other websites may have it, but I'm just a fan of Bible Hub. It just has a lot of good resources there that are handy, easy to access um, and, and to use and to get a hold of. So uh, faith, according to Strong's, we're going to define that in one moment, but I want to give you two more things before we go on. So, so some other resources that I use besides different uh, English translations is also a Strong's Exhaustive Concordance. Um, I believe those are still in print. If you want to buy one, you can get one for a reasonable price on Amazon. You probably can get one even cheaper if you buy a used one. But since all these resources that I'm about to share with you uh, are online, you, you can save some money there and just go on to some of these websites and be able to use these resources. So Strong's, I use that uh, uh, all the time. Another good resource is the Thayer's uh, Greek Lexicon. Again, Thayer's Greek Lexicon. Uh, you can find some resources for that online as well. If, if you use Bible Hub, you can find it there. And another resource, um, and I'm trying to remember if it does both the Hebrew and Greek, but I just can't remember at this moment, but I know it definitely does the Greek, uh, is another resource uh, that I use, which really helps to bring it out, to bring out the Greek definitions in the Greek language to the English speaker. It really helps us dissect it in the English vernacular. 
And that's a resource called uh, Helps Word Studies, Helps Word Studies. And those of you who have been a part of our uh, local fellowship uh, have heard me talk about these resources. It's a wonderful resource. It really helps bring out the, um, that language, the Greek language, uh, to our English understanding. So with that being said, back to our definition on faith. According to Strong's, it means to be persuaded to come to trust. Persuaded to come to trust. Now, let's jump back to Abraham for a moment. At the beginning of God and Abraham's uh, saga, this 25 year saga that they go on from the time God appears in Abr Abram's life at that time uh, until the birth of Isaac, that 25 year uh, period, there seems to be no indication in the biblical text, going back to Genesis chapter 11 and chapter 12, somewhere around there, uh, that uh, Abram has any encounter or any type of significant um, relationship with God at, at that point. So it's interesting that the writer, or rather uh, the Greek definition of this word faith, means to be persuaded to come to trust. It seems as if as soon as God made Abram the promise that something, that a transaction took place, that, that something some type of metamorphosis took place in his mind and in his heart to believe God and to believe God on such a level um, for something that would be seemingly impossible. And what were the impossible conditions? The impossible conditions were, I'm quite sure that him and Sarah, you know, they're a married couple. And we know what married couples do. I don't have to be graphic on today. Married couple engage in marital relations. And I'm quite sure they were engaging in marital relations. Um, and no seed, no pregnancy had come forth. And now Abram and his wife Sarai at the time, remember the names were changed later to Abraham and Sarah, have not seen anything in the natural transpire. Uh, so it would seem to be that this is now becoming an impossible situation. I'm now 75. My wife is up in, the, I think she was a few years younger than Abram. I can't remember the exact age right now. So she's 70, 71, 72, somewhere around there. And looking around at, you know, neighbors, looking around at friends and looking at family, we're past the time of having natural childbirth. And so now God makes this impossible promise that you are going to have a seed. Now, let's continue with our definition. Thayer's uh, talks about faith and it talks about it in relation to God. Now, Thayer says uh, that faith is to believe that God exists and is the creator and ruler of all things. To believe that God exists and is the creator and ruler of all things. Now, pulling from that definition, I think it makes it very easy to have faith, particularly if you have the first condition satisfied that you believe that God exists. So if you believe that God exists and you believe that God is the creator and ruler of all things, I think, I think it makes it very easy to have faith. Another uh, key word in our definition, John, tonight is this word substance from the King James. Now, defined from Strong's, it, it means to su support. Uh, it means a sense of steadiness. It means assurance. Now, I'm, I'm going to read something to you from um, the Help Word Studies, which is really phenomenal. I think it's gonna, really going to bring out the, the uh, definition and really help, help it make sense on tonight. From the Help Word Studies, it says that it's entitling someone to what is guaranteed under a particular agreement. So it's a title and or promise. It's a legitimate claim to, to property and or things. And because it is literally exists, because it literally exists, it's under a legal standing. It's under a legal standing. So we're gonna read something later from the Amplified Version, which I think will lend more clarity to what the HELP word study has given us on tonight. Another key word in our King James uh, reading of the scripture is this word hope. Strong's defines it as to expect or have an expectation. To expect or to have an expectation, hope. Help word studies, help word studies defines it as actively waiting for God's fulfillment. Now that's important, and we're going to talk about that a little bit later. If we don't get to it today, we're definitely going to talk about this concept of active waiting. Active waiting. So actively waiting for God's fulfillment. Another key word. Evidence and, and Strong's uh, defines it simply as proof and or a test. And Help Word Studies defines, it, defines uh, this evidence as inner conviction 
that focuses on God confirming God's inbirthing of faith. That's powerful. Inner conviction focusing on God confirming God's inbirthing of faith. So if I'm pulling from what the word help study is saying is that God is the originator and our author of faith. And now we, there's another scripture that actually talks about that. And we're not going to deal with that on today, but I want us to keep it in the back of our mind that God is the one responsible for the faith in our lives. So if God is the one responsible for the faith in our lives, and God is the creator of all things, and God is the ruler of all things, that's why I said initially that it makes it really kind of easy to have faith in God. Now, like I said before, I usually start with the King James Version, and then I begin to go through these other versions. Let's read some more here. That same verse in the New International Version, it begins to give us a little bit more understanding uh, in our English language. Same verse, NIV. It says, now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. I'm reading from my screen over here. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Okay, let's make it a little bit more clearer. Now let's read it from the New Living Translation. Faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. Faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. Another version that I like to use as well, in addition to the ones we already read, um, I didn't use the message translation on tonight, but I usually use that as well. But I, another one is the Holman Christian Standard Bible. Same verse, Hebrews 11, verse number one. Now faith is the reality of what is hoped for, the proof of what is not seen. Okay, it's coming a little bit more clear. And another version I, I like to use as well is the Young's Literal Translation, Young's Literal Translation. And Young's uh, writes Hebrew 11, verse one, and faith is of things hoped for, a confidence of matters not seen, a conviction. Read that one more time, because the, 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 the syntax and the grammar doesn't seem like it's 100% like we understand it today. So, and faith is of things hoped for, a confidence of matters not seen, a conviction, a conviction. So I'm gonna come out, come out of there and come back to our full screen. So uh, those uh, different translations give us uh, some insight. Uh, and, and I think uh, uh, a clear understanding of what we read uh, sometimes in our King version, King James version rather. Now the writer, I believe clearly outlines that faith is the subject in all of these um, different translations that, that we have read today. And indeed, faith is the substance, or rather the, the, the crux or, or, or the main subject of this entire chapter in chapter number 11. So the writer talks about faith as being substance. The faith, uh, this writer seems to indicate that faith is tangible. Um, and based on our, uh, our current vernacular of substance, it may seem a little bit different than what we think of substance. When something has substance, it has weight, it has gravity, and it certainly should have verity and or truthfulness behind it. Uh, the writer talks about things hoped for and or things desired. The writer talks about evidence of things, uh, evidence of things unseen, proof of things unseen. And then we read from the NIV, uh, which gave us a, a little bit more clarity. And I think in the NIV, I think it makes the English a little bit clearer because we don't quite speak King James English <laughs> uh, in the 21st century. So whereas in the King James version, because we do not typically speak that like this anymore, especially in the United States, uh, the language tends to send us in a different trajectory. Some of you ask me, well, what do you mean by that, Minister Frank? We have to consider the time and location uh, that the text uh, was written and the text was translated. We're talking about something that was done in England in 1611, commissioned by the monarchies. So the lens of these translators is through the lens of those who understood about what it means to live in a kingdom, because we don't live in a kingdom, we don't live under a monarchy in the United States of America. Now, this is a difficult concept because uh, we as Americans, uh, we, we have historically arose, arisen out of a culture that despised kingdom rule and desired a Republican form of government. Now, not Republican in terms of a political party, but in terms of formation of a republic 
to do away with the monarch, do away with the monarchy. Uh, so the time and location of the writing and translation of the King James Version are vital to our understanding of the text. Now, without that context, we will read uh, the King James Version from 21st century eyes. And if we do that, our perspective will be devoid of the context. And so that's why it's helpful oftentimes to read from other English translations where it has taken all of those um, uh, issues or, or, uh, in, into uh, consideration. Now, I want to find one more thing for you before we go on. I want to get this in, in the Amplified Bible, and I'm see if I can pull it up in a moment. So uh, faith is confidence in things hoped for, a conviction of matters not seen, conviction of matters not seen. And that was my spin on the uh, Young's Literal Translation. Now I want to read something to you from the Amplified Bible, another Bible that I use quite often uh, as well. Now the Amplified reads the same verse like this. Now faith is the assurance, in parentheses, the title deed, the confirmation, in parentheses, of things hoped for, again, parentheses, divinely guaranteed, and evidence of things not seen, the conviction of their reality. Faith comprehends as fact, but cannot be experienced by physical senses. Again, we got to go back to uh, uh, Father Abraham. We have to go back to Father Abraham. He's looking around at his physical circumstances. He says, I'm old. My wife is old. We've been trying all these years. Nothing happened. You said, I'm going to have descendants. And Abraham's asking, like, well, when and how is this going to take place? And this just reminds me of something. I want to share with you one more resource here. Uh, of a new resource that I've been recently uh, tapping into, which I found to be very helpful as we dig through the scriptures. Okay, so yeah, here we go. Here's the Amplified and another version below it. Let's just read the Amplified again. Now faith is the assurance, title deed, confirmation of things hoped for, divinely guaranteed. Divinely guaranteed by who? By God. And the evidence of things not seen, the conviction of their reality, Faith comprehends as fact what cannot be experienced by physical senses. So Abraham, Abram at the time, knowing the deadness of his body, knowing the deadness of Sarah's room, comprehended as fact what God had said, that you will have a seed and that your descendants will be as numerous of the, as the stars if you can count them, if you can count them. Now, here's another resource here, uh, family and friends. It's something that I've, I've recently uh, been using more and more and, and found it very helpful in, in my study of the scriptures. It's called the Orthodox Jewish Bible. Now, what's fascinating about this is that th this particular version uh, uses um, not so much Hebrew translations of words, but Hebrew transliteration of words. So a, a translation is an attempt to, to, to uh, have the, the, the uh, definition of one language to another. So if I, I were to translate Azul, uh, from Spanish to English, I would understand that, that azul is blue in English. So that's the translation. Now, the transliteration now is an attempt uh, to now to, to write in another language. I would say almost phon the, the, the phonetic, um, the phonetic writing, or, or the way that we pronounce a word in another language. Now, you're going to see some Hebrew words in here, and obviously they're not written this way because they're written in our English. Obviously, in their original uh, language, they'd be written in Hebrew characters, Hebrew characters. So let's look at this here in the Orthodox Jewish Bible, Hebrews chapter 11, verse number one. It says, now, imuna is the substance of things for which we have tikva. Hmm. Now, we got to define those two bolded words that so we can have some understanding on tonight. But I believe it's really going to help us on, on, on a journey to understanding, a deeper understanding of faith. Now, imuna is the substance of things for which we have tikva. All right. And again, you can find these different translations on Bible Hub. Uh, Bible Hub, I, I, I sing the praises of Bible Hub because it has so many resources that are easily accessible. And a lot of them uh, are not so um so they're not dense scholarly reading to where you need you know you know 10 phds to understand what the writer is saying i think it makes the, the um some of the concepts very accessible um just to everyday readers everyday persons who, who just want to dig more into the scriptures now so the writer says here the translation says now a is the substance of things 
for which we have Tikva. Now, I want to point you to another resource, and this one, I don't have a link for it, but I'm going to give you the name of the writer, uh, a gentleman by the name of Dr. Menachem Kellner. Dr. Men Menachem Kellner. I'll give you the last name, K-E-L-L-N-E-R. Again, Kellner, Dr. Kellner, K-E-L-L-N-E-R. Now, he writes an article about this Hebrew word, emuna, this Hebrew word, emuna. He wrote an article called Biblical Faith, and, he, and, he, and one of the sections that he has in there is discussing this word, emuna. Again, Dr. Kellner, K-E-L-L-N-E-R. -E 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 now, he writes, well, well, first, let me talk about uh, uh, the usage of this word. The usage of this word, a new emuna, is used in the Torah, using the Torah. Uh, that, that's what we understand as the, the Pentateuch or, or, and, or, and or the first uh, five books of, of, the, um, of the Bible. Now, it's used in the Torah for faith, and it's first used in relation to Abraham. It's first used in relation to Abraham regarding Abraham having the ability to believe God's promise that his descendants would be as many as the stars, but yet he had no children of his own yet. So this is what Dr. Kellner writes about Imuna, and I quote, it is belief in God, trust, and reliance upon God, all of which call forth behavior consistent with that stance of trust and reliance. That last part, that, 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 that messed me up. So Dr. Kellner argues that this Hebrew word Imuna calls for behavior consistent with that stance of trust and reliance. In other words, to, to simplify it, faith requires corresponding action. So again, we got to go back to Abram. God appears to Abram and said, this is what I want you to do. This is what I'm going to promise you. And the way that Abraham, or rather Abram at the time, responded in the faith was by obeying what God had commanded. So he left his father's house. He left all his brethren. He left all this kindred. And he left going out to seek a land and didn't know where he was going, but he trusted God. Now, there's another part of this verse that we have to define also. So we have a definition for imuna. It's calling for trust and having assurance in God, reliance in God, and also it, it, it demands or commands from the person that they also have consistent corresponding actions based upon what they say they believe. Now, this word tikva, this word tikva is defined simply as hope, simply as hope. Now, the etymology of this word comes from another Hebrew verb, which means to gather into strength, to gather into strength. Now, uh, this describes the act of combining a multiple of strands and calling those into a single, uh, which makes a stronger cable. So just imagine someone having individual strands. So this action of this tikva is taking those individual strands, combining them together to make a stronger cable. Uh, it is used uh, to mean to gather or to collect, but also in the sense of to hope and or eagerly await. But like I said before, we had this concept of active waiting, active waiting, active waiting. So in our waiting, in this place of hope, in this place of, uh, of expecting or expectation, we're not just sitting idle. We're still doing what God has commanded to do. So whatever the last command of God is, whatever the last instruction that has God has given us, we're continuing to do that over and over and over until we hear from God again. So that's the process of being active in our waiting. Another way that we're active in our waiting is that we keep praying. We keep believing. And another way that we're active in our waiting is that we keep worshiping, we keep praising. And that's a difficult place to be when you're thinking, thinking that you've done everything that you're, that, that, that you're supposed to do. And yet there's this extended waiting period. And in that period, you have to be active, still trusting, still yet believing, and still yet so in corresponding actions based upon what you believe. Well, saints of God, I think we bit off a, a big part of this puzzle on tonight, and I really wanna give us time uh, to, to digest that, to digest that. Again, uh, saints of God, so our homework on this week 
is not another assignment like I've given before. But our homework on this week is really to dig into these definitions. I, I want you on your own time to dig into the resources in Bible Hub. I want you to see for yourself uh, that, that Minister Frank is not just giving you stuff and making stuff up or, or off, the, off the cuff and just giving you a bunch of information. I want you to see that you're getting the best information, that you're getting scholarly information, uh, that you're getting spirit-led information that's going to feed you and help you and strengthen you on your faith walk. So our homework on this week is to go back to Hebrews chapter 11. Look at those different translations that we read and maybe even find some more. Uh, another one that I didn't use on tonight is, is message translation and another one is a common English Bible and there's so many others that will allow us to bring forth that language into a way that we can understand it because if we don't understand it we can't walk in it we can't apply it so it's just like having uh, an instruction book to put your desk together or, or, or to work on your car or whatever the case may be so you have this instruction manual but the instruction manual is in Greek and you don't read Greek you don't understand Greek I don't want us to be in that position. I want us to be in a position that we understand what we're reading and we're able to understand it and not only do that, but to apply it in our daily lives. Like one of those definitions said from the Imuna, that um, having uh, actions that, that are consistent with what we believe. So first we got to understand what is it that we believe? We have to believe that God exists. We have to believe that God is the creator and ruler of all things. And also uh, we have to be in agreement with God. And that's the fifth component on today. That's something that we added. And I think we're gonna, probably gonna add several more to these. And then when we wrap up at the end, uh, I wanna be able to put together a study guide or something that'll be a quick resource that we can go back. But saints of God, I'm encouraging you to do the work on this week. For week one homework was to make a decision to believe God. Week's two homework was to start our faith journal, start chronicling it and leave it as a legacy to our generations. So our homework on this week is to dig back into Hebrews 11 verse 1. Uh, I want you to go through the different translations, read them over and over again, get it really into your mind, get it into your spirit, continue to go through the different translations so that we can have a better understanding of it in English. Look through the Strong's um, exhaustive concordance about those words that we define, uh, hope, evidence, uh, faith, and substance, those words in particular, we, we want to look at those in Strong's, we want to look at those again in the Thayer's, uh, we want to avail ourselves to the help word studies, which I think is a phenomenal uh, resource to really help us with our understanding of these biblical terms. So saints of God, we're going to continue to build on this, and next week, I think what we're going to try to do on next week is, is take what we've done on this week, and now find some ways of, of applying it practically and then one of the ways that we can do that is look at some of the biblical figures and see how they walk and live in faith so that will also push us a little bit further down into those verses in the hall of the faith because we have plenty of examples right there in the rest of the chapter well saints of god that's our time on today i'm trusting that you will do the homework because this is not an exhaustive uh, 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 teaching that i'm doing and i've said this over and over again there's no way i can get into all the nooks and crannies and just lay it all out for you you have to do some work too so we have to work in concert with one another and hopefully this is stimulating you to dig deeper into scriptures and read it and see it for yourselves i want you to see this thing i want you to understand this thing i want you to walk in it i want you to live in it i want you to see your faith made a whole and made sight in your life that is my prayer that is my hope uh, saints of god also uh, want to remind you to keep checking out our website because some good and great information is coming up as to how we're going to be gathered yes it's finally here in a few short weeks we will be able to fellowship together in the sanctuary it's going to be a glorious time with the lord but you got to go to the website and get the latest information there's some registration information and there's some other information as to how we're going to do this and how we're going to do it in safety and in decency and in order well saints of god we love you and on behalf of the, the entire Springfield Gardens United Methodist Church family, and on behalf of our pastor, Reverend Cecil B. Stone, we're praying for you. We love you. We're looking forward to see you in worship, and we're looking forward to continue with our series that your faith will grow strong and that you'll have an understanding for the principal thing the scripture says that in all you're getting, get understanding. That is my prayer that you will get understanding. Let us pray as we go. God, I thank you again for just for a few moments of wrestling with the text and wrestling with these definitions and challenging us to go deeper in your word. I ask God that the word be 
implanted deeply in the hearts and minds of all who had heard that they would have uh, greater knowledge, greater understanding, and be able to apply it and see faith work in their lives. I thank you for these things in Christ's name. Amen. Well, saints of God, prayerfully, we'll see you on next week, and prayerfully, we'll see you soon in the sanctuary, worshiping our Lord. Until then, pray that God will keep you and strengthen you and bless you. Until we meet again.